Hello everyone. Welcome to the Salesforce CPQ video series. In this session, we will be looking at the code line editor. I am Sudha Sundaram. I have 12 plus years of experience predominantly in the Salesforce and the Agile world. I have played uh, multiple roles in both Salesforce and Agile. I am Lemonix Salesforce.com certified, an application architect and a CPQ specialist included. I'm also a trailblazer mentor, and I love to paint, dance, and I love traveling. You can follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn. I have posted uh, my links here. So in today's session, we will be looking at the code line editor. We are gonna say you have to use the code line editor adding columns to the line editor, code line editor drawer. We would also be looking at how we dynamically change the code line editor column headers. And we will look at all the default buttons the code line editor offers. We would look at how to create groups and how do we ungroup. We would also be looking at the guidelines for cloning code lines adjusting column width, which is a new feature from summer 20. How to show product image fields in the code line editor. And finally, we would be looking at the line editor packet setting. Now let us start with what is a code line editor and how do we use the code line editor? The core of the CPQ is code and code lines. Code and editor is the user interface. Salesforce CPQ provides the sales reps to add or remove products, apply discounts and markups, and also calculate prices for their codes. Select a code in your Salesforce CPQ application and click on the edit lines. And that would navigate us to the code line editor page. The code line editor lets you view all your code lines and apply changes across the entire code or to the individual lines. Using these fields under the code information section, just about the code line list, we can apply code wide discounts or markups, for example, through the additional discount or markup fields that might be under the code information. Typically, these field value gets applied across all the code lines. So let's say, we have a special relationship with this customer and we would like to offer a 10 percentage of additional discount to this customer. So when I type 10 against the additional discount percentage field and hit on calculate, it get, gave me a 10 percent discount on the, all the code lines for this particular customer. Now, moving on, um, we see there are multiple columns that the code line editor has. Let us look at how to add or remove columns from the line editor. So to do this, we use field sets. Let's navigate to the object manager and select the code line object and navigate to field sets. And let us pick the line editor field set here. So we can see all the default fields available in the code line editor view here. So let us say we need to add the product description, start and end date fields as additional columns to be displayed. So we could search for the fields here and drag and drop them at its appropriate location. Let us also look for start and end date and drag and drop them here. Once you're done, you can click on save and go back to your code line editor, refresh the page. And we should see the additional columns that we added to be displayed here. We do see the description, start date and the end date. So we could also sort the columns in the code line editor by clicking the arrow to the right of the column header. So the columns uh, would be sorted alphabetically or reverse alphabetically based on your click. 
and while columns with numerical values may be sorted by ascending or the descending order. So let us look at this code information section here. Say we have some calculations to be driven by code fields. We have to go back and forth between code and code line editor to make these changes and check, correct? So instead of that, we can bring the necessary code fields into the code line editor and avoid going back and forth. The typical example was the one we looked at, like additional discount percentage where um, you know, for this customer, we want to give an additional discount and want it to be applied across the code on all the code lines. So we just need to go and give the additional discount here and hit on calculate and it reflects on all the code lines instead of us going and doing it on individual line items here. So uh, to add fields to this code information section here, uh, we need to go back to the object manager. And this time, let's get to the code object. Navigate to the field sets and let us pick the line editor field set here. Again, search for the necessary fields you want to add at the code information section and drag and drop them to this field set. So I'm going to search for markup percentage and I'm going to go and add it to the field set. Hit on save go back to the Kotlin editor and refresh the page. So now we would see the markup percentage listed under the code information section. Again, using this field, we would be able to apply markup to all the code lines across this code. Let us say if our code line editor has a large field set and we want to organize the editor layout, we can place certain fields in a collapsible drawer below each line item. This feature removes the need for horizontal scrolling and let us see all fields related to a code line in one view. Generally, it is recommended to show only seven to eight columns in a default view and place the additional fields in the drawer to extend the visibility. So to open the drawer, click the arrow icon on the far right of the code line. Add the fields you want collapse to the code line's standard line item drawer field set and refresh the code line editor and when you come back here and click on the drawer icon, you would see that the fields were added here. So let us try adding a field to the drawer. So let's move back to the object manager. Let us go back to the code line object. Navigate to the field sets. And this time we will pick the standard line item drawer field set. and say we would like to add additional quantity as a field. We could just search for the field and just drag and drop them to the field set. Click on save. When we go back here and refresh our page and click on the arrow icon on the far right of the code line we would notice that the additional quantity field that we added to the field set is reflected back here. All fields in this uh, set appear in the drawer under each code lines. So we can have any number of drawers opened or closed simultaneously and edit fields as needed in each drawer using the edit icon that you see here. So if you select the table header arrow to collapse all the line item drawers for the table, that would do the work for us to collapse all at once. Now that we have looked at the line editor drawer, let's move on to see how we could dynamically change code line editor column headers. We saw that the columns here are controlled by the code line objects line editor field set. 
Now say for instance that the sales trip sells certain codes at cost plus markup pricing. They will need different set of columns around markup added here. Instead of adding them to the same field set, which will make those column always appear irrespective of the use cases, we could dynamically change the columns as needed. Here is how I have accomplished this using this custom view field. So we currently see these columns here, the product code, product name, description, start date, end date, quantity, list unit price, net unit price, and net total. And when I change this custom view to cost plus markup and hit on the quick save, we would see a different set of columns displayed here. If you notice the markup percent and markup amount was not there earlier, but we see that in this particular view, when I selected the cost plus markup as the pick list value against the custom view field. For this new set of columns to be displayed, we start with creating a field set in the code line object. So let's move on to the object manager and the code line object field sets. If you notice here, for demo purposes, I have created a field set called cost plus markup. Here we have the list of columns that we want to display when the sales rep selects cost plus markup in the custom view. So if you notice, we've added the markup percentage and the markup amount here as the necessary columns. Now we have to create the custom view field in the code object, which will allow the user to select this particular field set we created. Let's move on and look at the code object. And if you go to the fields and relationships, you will notice that I've created a field called custom view. For this field to work the way it has to, we use the Salesforce CPQ special field called the edit lines field set name to dynamically display different code line field sets or the column headers in the code line editor. So the special fields in CPQ have a very special purpose. When we create these fields, they must have a specific field name and an API name. In this case, the field name is edit lines field set name and the API name is edit lines field set name underscore underscore C. CPQ will recognize these fields and natively perform predefined appropriate functions or actions. You can choose to control the field set that is displayed by using a formula field, or you can allow the users to make their own selection by using a pick list field. So I used the pick list route this time. So when you create the pick list field, again, please ensure that the field name is set to edit lines field set name. This is very important. And then input the pick list values here. In this case, I just added one because I wanted cost plus markup as my value. And please ensure there, these must be the API names of the field sets you created on the code line object. Remember that the field site API names do not contain underscore underscore C. Now, to make this field available on the code information section in the line editor, Go to the code object and the line editor field set and include the custom view field. I've already included the custom view field to this field set. In the line editor, select a value from the pick list to see if the correct columns are displayed. Quick save must be clicked in order for the users to see the change of the code line column headers. So every time you make a selection here, please ensure you click quick save for the changes to be reflected. Now that I have selected none, it is showing different set of columns. And when I select cost plus markup and I hit on quick save, I see a different set of columns here based on the field set. Setting the pick list value back to none and clicking the quick save will return the UI to the line editor field sets, which is the default one. Like I mentioned, we could control the field set also using a formula field. 
just have to do the same first step of creating a field set in the code line object and then navigate to the code object and create a formula field and again please ensure the field name is edit lines field set name and the api name is set to edit lines field set name underscore underscore c and ensure you set your formula written type to text now that we have looked at how to add columns or remove columns from the code line editor and how do we change uh, the column headers dynamically and also how to add fields to the code information so that we could apply the value across all the code lines let us move on to look at these default buttons that we see on the code line editor so the first one is the add products and as the name suggests it takes us to the product lookup page where we can select products to add to the code so once i click on the add products button i would see all the list of products here i would be able to search for any product or select products and say select here and then it would be added to my code line this next option here that you would see is add favorites so this option takes us to the favorites page within the product lookup page where we can add previously saved or shared favorite records to the code say for example um, the sales rep typically sells a lot of uh, a laptop 15 bundle or an accident insurance or projector in this case so he or she has marked it as your favorite product so that they don't have to source through a large product catalog wherein they could just click on add favorites and they would be navigated here to their favorite section and then they would be able to click on it and add it to their code lines so this is what add favorites does and uh, typically to add a code line or like a product to your favorites so if you just navigate to any of your code lines you would see the small star icon when you click on it it will let you add it to your favorite list of products so the next button we see here is add groups so say for example we want to apply discounts or often totals for a specific set of code lines by organizing them into a groups within the line editor this is what we do here so we can create ad hoc groups on the code record itself or create dedicated solution groups for selection across any code so let us see how do we add groups so i click on add group and by default it adds all the code lines to the first group that we create and say for example i want to create a group for hardware and another group for software. So I'll be able to click on add group and uh, create groups here. And uh, say I wanna drag and drop my productivity suite and cloud storage to the software group because they are technically software so i would be able to select them and i would be able to drag them and drop them to the group so now as you see that we have two groups it's the same code lines but we have categorized them logically into two groups hardware and software and we have products under each of this group now, for example, if we want to give an additional 10% discount for all the software products, we have some promotion going on and we would like to, you know, give an additional discount, uh, we would be able to do so uh, here. So we can create a group for your different categories um, based on the logic you want. And then you group our code line items and then just apply the discount for that specific group so i mentioned about the solution group so how different that is is a solution group is a predefined code line group that sales reps can add to any code say for example it is we have a well-defined set of common code line grouping across our products so we have a clear classification of hardware software or accessories or any other groups that we have then we create solution group and instead of doing this on every single code we could have them as solution groups and then use it across codes 
So that is the benefit of using the solution groups. So now let's move to our next button on the code line editor, which is the delete lines. So we can select several lines um, in our code and then click this button to delete all the lines at once. Uh, we can see this button only if the administrator has enabled it. And the next one is quick save. Uh, quick save saves the code line changes without leaving the code line editor. So I make any changes on my code line and I hit on quick save, uh, it will be saved, but I will, I will still stay on this page. Uh, while calculate, what it does is Salesforce CPQ applies all the price calculations to our code, including all relevant price rules and product rules. We also use this button to recalculate the code's prices after we make the changes. So if you remember, we applied a 5% of additional discount and we clicked on calculate. What it does is it tries to show us the calculated uh, you know, price here. The next button that we see here is cancel. So like the name suggests, we can use this button or to return to the code detail page without saving any changes. And finally, save is to save the code line changes and return to the code detail page. And uh, so these are the default buttons here. So in addition to these default buttons, we could add custom ones too. So custom actions are used for this. Custom actions are for adding buttons, menus, or you know, separators that sales apps can click to perform an action in the code line editor, configurator, or several other detail pages. Say for example, sales apps can select to show a filtered section of your price book or to direct users to an external or an internal URL. So we would look at uh, custom actions and search filters and details in a separate video. So I just wanted to give you a quick overview about uh, how custom actions will also come in handy if we want to add a custom button here. Going back to these default buttons, one important thing to note is that you need to click on save or quick save to update the code and the code lines with the changes made. Clicking on calculate only shows the changes in the UI but does not commit the changes to the record. Technically, when we click on calculate, we would see all the pricing calculations updated in the UI. But again, until we hit on a save or quick save, it doesn't get saved on the record. Now let us move on and see how do we clone code lines. We can clone a product in the line editor and reconfigure it as needed before finalizing the code. The clone line maintains all the field values and configurations. So say we want to clone this particular bundle, laptop 13. I just need to hit on the small icon, clone line. And I would see that the bundle is cloned right now. I can make the changes to reconfigure it. Say for example, I need uh, to update a markup on this particular CPU item to 5%, I could update that and I could hit on calculate and I could save it. We see that the clothes line has maintained all the field values and configurations when we hit on the clone line and then we could make changes to reconfigure it. We can also clone one or more products from a code line group or solution group directly to another. Select enable multi-line delete in your line editor package setting to enable this particular feature. All right, so um, there's this new feature that I wanted to talk about, which is new from summer 20. It's for adjusting the column width. So to give sales reps the ability to customize the layout of the code line editor, we could add the ability to resize column widths. So as I mentioned, this is available from summer 20 and this feature is also available with large code experience. So to do that, you could click and drag the edge of the column you would like to resize. 
the changes we make are auto saved and they persist. So when we open the code line editor again, we don't have to resize our columns. And remember, we can only resize the columns, but not the rows. And when we resize a column in a field set, we don't resize it for the other field set. So if you want to do it for another one, you will have to click on that field set and you know resize the column widths if needed. Also, one great thing the Salesforce did was there's minimum column widths to ensure that we don't inadvertently hide a column. So you can only adjust it or minimize it to a particular limit, which is great. We can reset our columns to system default by clicking the settings gear that you see here and choosing the reset column widths. So to enable this, uh, we need to give create, read, update, delete user permissions for column metadata and fail set metadata objects to have the resize functions enabled. And also note that we can only resize column in the full site Salesforce site. The column widths also apply to our Salesforce mobile app. Uh, so keep in mind the column widths you select works for both. So one additional thing I wanted to talk about here was we could also show product image fields in the code line editor. Say if your product record contains a custom image field, um, we can show that image within any of the product's code lines in the code line editor as well. Just need to add the custom image fields to the line and editor field set of the code lines and we would see it listed here. In case all your products or most of your products have product image and it helps uh, sales rep to easily visualize the product or quickly sort through them then uh, please uh, use that particular feature that Salesforce CPQ offers. Now let's move on to look at uh, the line editor package settings. So uh, if you click on the setup and search for the install packages, we would see the Salesforce CPQ package, click on configure and navigate to line editor tab here. we would see all the line editor package settings here. So let us take a look at what each package setting means. So the first one is hide renewed assets when editing. So renewed assets don't have a net total, can't be discounted or marked up, and are used only to contribute 2% of total product's final price. So to hide these renewed assets line item in the code line editor, we use this particular setting. It is recommended hiding them if you want your sales reps to focus only on the editable code lines. The next one is visualize product hierarchy. So I select the setting to indent the components of the bundle products, including the nested bundles. So this feature makes your bundles easier to read, especially if they have many product options or layers of nested bundles. So you would like to visualize the product hierarchy. The next one is preserve bundle structure. So this setting is to display a bundle's product options in the same order in renew renewal codes. So this feature is useful if we organized our bundles with important or frequently edited product options at the beginning of the bundle, then the same order gets retained in the renewal codes as well. The next one is keep bundle together. So when we move or drag and drop a bundle parent to a different location in the code line editor, Salesforce CPQ moves all its components to the new code line position as well when the setting is enabled to keep the bundle together. So the next one is totals field. Salesforce CPQ uh, summarizes the value of this code field that you select here across your code and shows the result in the code line editor's total field. Typically net total is the default value and we would be able to change it to our 
requirement needs. Moving on to the next one, which is line subtotals total field. So Salesforce CPQ summarizes the value of this code line field across your code and shows the result in the code line editor's subtotal field. Again, here the net total is the default value and you would be able to select anything else for your business needs. Moving on to the large code threshold. So here we can define a threshold to improve code line editor performance if we have large codes. So plan on adjusting your large code threshold when you start encountering governor limits. This is very important. It is recommended that the threshold value is slightly lower than the number of lines on your code when you start to hit the limits. Code with line counts above this value send only essential code lines rather than every code line on the code during UI calls. So when the threshold is active, Salesforce CPQ also ignores code scoped product rules for that particular code. And the next one, which is also related is code batch size. So code load and save actions process this number of code lines per batch. So the default value is 150, smaller batches are less likely to hit governor limits. However, the larger batches cause better code line performance because the editor makes fewer round trips. So the next one is enable expand collapse bundles. So basically when this is selected, you know, and especially in large code editor, users can expand and collapse bundles in code line editor. Moving on to the next one, it's the default bundle setting. So you could choose to expand or collapse bundle products by default in the line editor. And the next one is actions column placement. So like its name suggests, uh, this is used to place the delete and edit actions to the left or right of the code lines in the code line editor. So you could choose right or left from this drop down, and that would take care of it. The next one is pretty commonly used and uh, this is the enable multi line delete. So when the setting is enabled, the sales trips can select multiple code lines and then delete them. Moving on, the next one is the product configuration initializer. So say if your company uses a custom visual force page for its configurator, you provide a lookup to the page here. The next one is enable asset upgrades. So sales scripts can click upgrade assets in the code line editor. So enable the settings if your org uses upgrade products, otherwise you would not need it. Moving on, the next one is the group subtotals field. So Salesforce CPQ summarizes the value of this code line group field across your code and shows the result in the code line editor's group total field. Again, um, like earlier, the net total is the default value and you can choose a different value based on your business need. The next one is wrap buttons. So select the settings to allow the code line editor buttons to wrap rather than collapse within the small windows. Moving on, the next one is the enable large code threshold validation. So this one evaluates validation rules while the large code threshold is active and prevents sales reps from performing invalid actions in the code line editor. The next one is enable compact mode. So this removes the blank empty spaces in the code line editor for code line drawer fields hidden by a page security plugin. The next one is enable large code experience. Uh, select this setting to ensure and enhance user experience for codes containing a large number of code lines. So sales reps have an easier time navigating large codes. So typically the enhancements will include single group view, individual pricing table view, like tabs for standard and segmented tables, fixed code footer and locked column headers.
finally, uh, there is another last setting here called enable column resizing. If you remember, uh, we were able to resize column widths on the code line editor. So this setting is to allow column width customization in the code line editor. So along with the user permissions that I mentioned earlier, we'll have to enable this to have the column width resizing enabled. So with that, we come to the end of this session on Codeline Editor. Thank you for listening to this session. Hope this was informative. Thank you, Apex Hours, for giving us the opportunity to present this session here.